Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing some concepts of RBI monetary policy measures because tomorrow is RBI monetary policy day and as a trader it is one of the very important days for us. So we have to know some knowledge about this particular day. Uh, we have to know that which all measures RBI uses to control inflation and all. Then only we'll be able to take right trade on this particular day. So I'll be discussing some concepts about that in this video. And guys, please watch this video completely. And if you feel to join to my course, I'll give the link in the description. You can subscribe to that. Okay, so now let's watch the video. Okay, now we will discuss how we are going to trade RBI policy okay so how to trade RBI policy now guys before I discuss this I will give you some basic concepts about various policies okay so first you need to understand the government side is also having certain policies and measures so RBI is actually part of government okay so if you see government RBI is actually a part of it. So that is one thing which you need to understand. Now, what's the role of uh, both as well as, I mean, uh, government as well as RBI? If you see, one is you need to promote growth and you need to control inflation. So this is what you need to know. And government will always look for promotion of growth. Okay, so government will always look for promotion of growth. RBI will also uh, look for promotion of growth. But for RBI, the prime concern is con controlling inflation. And you will see this is the language RBI use always. Maintaining price stability is the fundamental or prime concern when it comes to RBI. So you will see sometimes government and RBA will go contradictory because government want to promote growth all the time and RBA want to control inflation. Now, if you look, what is the contradiction? The reason is if you promote growth, okay, if you if the growth is high, which means the money supply will be high, very high in the market because the advantage of the growth will be permeated to each and every section. So, it will be uh, distributed, right? So, the growth will be distributed and everyone will get advantage. So, money supply will be high. When money supply will be high means there is a concept called purchasing power. So, when you have more money, your purchasing power will go up. So, whether your salary or something was increasing, your purchasing capacity will go up. So, you tend to purchase more. That situation is where you will see demand in the economy will be high. So, when the demand is high, what will happen automatically? The price will increase. So, if you look this, you can understand one thing. If growth increase automatically, the price of items will also increase and that's what you consider as inflation. So, these are inversely proportional. If growth is there... The issue is that along with that, inflation will come. Okay, so when government promote growth, inflation as an offshoot of that. So if you need to control inflation, what you need to do here, you need to control the money supply or you basically need to control demand. Okay, so if RBI, if their prime objective is inflation, they have to control the demand. Now, how to control the demand? Reduce the money supply. So, how it will work? It, if you need to control inflation, you need to control the demand. So, how to reduce the demand? You try to reduce the money supply. So, when money supply is reduced, what will happen? Your purchasing power will automatically come down. And with that, the price will come down. As you know, when the purchasing power will come down, what will happen is you will definitely see the demand come down, right? Because you don't have enough purchasing power. When the demand in the economy is less, what will happen? The price will come down and that's how RBI can control inflation. So, if RBI need to control inflation, what RBI need to do? RBI need to focus on reducing money supply. So, when RBI reduce money supply, the issue is that it will affect the the growth okay how because in the economy money supply is not there so investment will come down and it will affect the growth 
okay so if you understood this basics now let's proceed with what rbi do and what government will do okay now let's see one side what government can do and what on the other side what rbi can do government do certain policies which you call as fiscal policy as part of budget you will see that apart from all that also you can see a uh, fiscal measures like increase and decrease of tax etc this we need we don't want to discuss uh, as of now okay see simply increase in tax is not that uh, good right decrease in tax is good so fiscal policy measures we can discuss separately if you want to but that's not significant we'll be focusing on rbi measures so rbi measure is what you call as monetary policy okay so this is fiscal policy government measures are fiscal policy rbi measures is what you call as monetary policy now what's the focus of monetary policy uh basically to promote growth and uh, also to control inflation okay but since both are contradictory if you promote growth inflation will come rbi will try to promote growth only if inflation is stable if you see the inflation situation stable in the country then only rbi will try to promote growth even though it's an objective of rbi otherwise what is the prime concern of rbi it is nothing but maintaining the price stability so in monetary policy measures mostly you will be seeing rbi will try to maintain the inflation or price stability once the price stability is achieved then only rbi will focus on growth but the government will do different government always want to promote growth okay that's a reason why you see uh, during ragram ranjan when he was in the he was a rbi governor there was a lot of tussle between government as well as rbi government want to increase the growth but that time inflation was very high and consistently rbi was increasing the interest rates now let's look into the monetary policy okay so that is what you consider as rbi policy now let's see how you are going to trade this but for that you need to know what is monetary policy monetary policy is basically for controlling inflation this is what the target how to control inflation you will have to uh, you know do something with the demand so you need to decrease the demand how can you decrease the demand only way to decrease the demand is bring down money supply okay so rbi will play with money supply so what what is what what rbi can do here is rbi can do some you know some use some monetary policy measures so i will use this word now there are certain monetary policy measures which is there with rbi by using that rbi will control money supply so rbi have certain monetary policy measures it can be you already know repo or it can be reverse repo okay there are many but let's understand the important ones there is something called as marginal standing facility okay marginal standing facility there is something called as bank rate okay and apart from that there is something called as crr there is something called as slr crr is cash reserve ratio last two monetary policy measures if you see this is one which created the move in the market i'll explain this then slr is a statutory liquidity ratio this is the bank rate this is marginal standing facility okay so out of this let's keep these two separate and let's discuss this separately okay all these rates all these four rates repo reverse repo marginal standing facility bank rate all are actually connected with repo repo rate okay and this is called as and this is also called as policy rate okay so normally you will be seeing the word repo rate only uh, since i bring the term monetary policy i'm using this policy rate now rbi won't announce separately reverse repo or marginal standing facility or bank rate because all are connected with repo rate so rbi will fix only repo rate you can say policy rate so let's say if it is uh, fixed as 6 percentage okay other interest other rates are directly connected with repo rate so 
the bank rate the marginal standing facility reverse repo all are actually connected with this now let's see how this is going to work after that we'll explain crr and slr see guys crr is nothing but basically i'll tell you crr is nothing but certain amount of money in cash form if you see crr you need to maintain in cash form with the banks so the banks have to maintain certain percentage of their total deposit in cash in liquid form so it can be four percentage okay now what does this mean this means that out of 100 rupee you got as deposit you can you have to keep four rupee with yourself you are not allowed to lend this so you can lend rest of the amount only even from that also there are certain requirements let's say there is something called as slr so if in crr you keep you're keeping money in form of cash in slr you will have to keep certain percentage in gold or government bonds or cash but gold return is less cash um, you won't keep uh, because no return so banks will invest in bonds actually so there are certain percentage let's say that is 24 percentage so you need to understand this that's why i'm discussing this okay so what ultimately the bank can lend you receive 100 100 rupee rep deposit let's say 4 rupee the crr this you have to keep with yourself let's say 24 percentage is the slr you have to invest this in government boon so that means let's say this is 26 that means 4 plus 26 30 rupee is over so you can do anything with that rest of the 70 is what the bank can lend you understood this so out of 100 rupee received bank can lend 70 now from where bank make money or bank make profit bank make profit only through lending so now think about the situation the more the bank lent the more the profit will be and when you lend you will get interest and this is the profit of the bank from that only banks make profit after the expenses expenses means a rent a salary and everything after that the from the interest only bank make money from bonds some return will be there but from interest only banks make money now let's focus on crr let's say crr is now four percentage it has increased to five percentage so now think about this how it is going to affect the bank bank earlier you need to keep four rupee out of hundred and you can lend rest of it but now you need to keep five rupee so what happened now when you increase the crr let's say crr has increased this is what you see in the news immediately what you need to understand is initially it was four and now it is five that means now you need to keep more with the bank so that bank can lend less okay so what happened lending capacity of the bank came down when you increase crr so it will directly affect the profitability of the bank so the profitability will be directly affected so crr is something which you need to take very seriously if crr is increased what will happen the uh, the profitability will come down and the profit of the bank will come down so now think about the shareholders will they hold it or will they book it they know that the next quarter when uh, you know the results are announced the profit will be less so that uh, th that's not a good condition right so what will happen if crr is increased the sell off will happen this is not good for banks so what you need to do now in simple terms if crr is increased is what you're seeing you need to buy put option so market will come down market will come down if crr is increased not it, it may not affect nifty it will directly affect the banks the bank stocks will perform very bad because crr is directly affecting banks but repo is different it will i'll come to repo okay repo will affect nifty as well as the bank nifty or entire market will affect here i would say bank stocks will come down Okay, because CRR is directly connected with banks. I repeat, repo can impact the market, Nifty as well as Bank Nifty, but all sectors. But CRR will directly affect the banks as it will reduce the lending capacity of the banks and it will affect the profitability of the banks. Okay, so same is the case with... Uh, now, why RBI is increasing the CRR? 
because if crr is increased bank will lend less so automatically money supply will come down in the market when money supply come down the purchasing power will come down in the market because bank is lending less so what will happen the demand will come down in the market so how the inflation is controlled by controlling the demand so by increasing crr also you can control inflation now if you see you are seeing the opposite now rbi saying that uh, inflation is stable so let's reduce crr instead of increasing if crr is reduced it is bullish and it's a very good sign but increasing crr not good bearish reducing crr is good for the banks why now bank can lend more and the lending capacity will increase if banks can lend more the interest uh, income will be more and profitability will be more so what will happen in the market what's the impact impact will be inflation will be higher uh, but let's don't discuss about that okay so this is about crr now srr also is the same let's say now it is 24 if it is increased to 25 you have to keep more in terms of government bonds so what will happen same issue will happen lending capacity comes down if slr is increased so what will happen profit of the banks will come down so this is not good this is bearish so okay same as a case i'm not repeating the same lending capacity will come down so it is affecting the profit so market is bearish you have to buy put option or sell call option so i'll repeat once again crr increase crr decrease crr increase means it's bad why because bank's profit will come down okay so what you need to do market is bearish take bearish trade either by put option or sell option sorry or sell call option now crr is reducing it is good for banks why banks profit can increase so it is bullish so you can take either by uh, buy call or sell put you need to take a bullish trade same is the case with slr slr increase it is bad out of these two crr is more important more significant because crr increase means it's directly affecting the banks and it is an idle money in the cash form you need to keep but in case of slr it is okay why it is okay because you are investing at least some all these in the government bonds and you get some return but in crr no return for the banks okay but still increase is bad because it will reduce the profit so you need to take a bearish view if, if slr decrease it is good it can help the bank to lend more you can increase the profit so you need to take a bullish trade okay now let's come to repo i told you this is a policy rate so let's say repo is 6 percentage okay now what will rbi do with repo if repo increased what will happen is it is basically the interest which is increasing so for the banks also see uh, repo is the interest rate at which the banks borrow from rbi so repo rate banks borrow from rbi so banks cannot lend anything less than this right the ba if bank is borrowing at at 6% bank will lend at least 6.5 so all the interest rates will be connected with repo if you take a housing loan uh, you can see there will be condition that will be adjusted based on repo okay so if our rbi is fixing repo from 6 to 7 what will happen the interest rate will increase automatically so banks will also increase the increase their interest rate so repo increase means it is basically the interest on all loans will increase that means what is the cost of borrowing cost of borrowing this interest so the cost of borrowing will be high cost of borrowing is now high now if the cost of borrowing is high will you borrow no you won't borrow right 
so what will happen is uh, we will uh, try to wait for repo to come down until and unless you have some emergency so it will lead to reduction in money supply so what what rbi want to do uh, rbi want to reduce money supply that's why repo is increased okay so repo is increased rbi will reduce money supply so automatically purchasing power will come down when purchasing power will come down the demand will come down and automatically inflation will come down so if inflation is high what rbi will do rbi will simply increase the repo so if you see repo is increased what will happen inflation situation is bad to reduce inflation only rbi is doing that but what is the issue then issue is that it will affect the growth why it is affecting the growth the investment is not coming because the cost of borrowing is high people cannot borrow people cannot invest the firms cannot borrow firms cannot invest companies cannot borrow they cannot invest so money supply is anyway less so since purchasing power is less people are not buying also uh, you you are not investing your production is coming down so automatically growth uh, will be affected and you will uh, in in the terms of gdp gdp will be reducing that is the reason why when repo is increased it is not good for the market it is a bearish situation if repo is increased market will fall and it is not only affecting the banks it is also affecting other sectors i told you investments will reduce so the firms cannot invest so the firms cannot produce it will affect the gdp of also of the country okay so it it will affect every section every sector crr will affect banks directly because banks need to keep more fund and they can lend less so the profitability of the banks will come down but here banks profitability also will come down since interest is high people won't borrow also other firms cannot borrow other firms cannot invest so the other firms also will be affected so it is very bad for banks as well as for other sectors so for nifty as well as for the bank nifty this is bad so in simple terms if repo increased what trade you need to take you need to take a bearish trade now if repo decreased it is extreme bullish situation what does the what does this indicate if rbi is reducing repo you understood already one thing that rbi's prime concern is price stability so rbi will do everything for that only so once the price stability is achieved then only rbi will look for growth that is the only situation where rbi will reduce interest rate repo so if you see rbi is decreasing repo which means price stability is very good market is very good stable now we are looking for growth so this is extreme extreme bullishness now what are the third scenario not increased not decreased unchanged so this is also a, a okay situation but you cannot convincingly take a trade what is the trend based on that you need to proceed so i repeat and everything is connected with repo slr not the bank rate uh, the marginal standing facility reverse repo everything is connected you just need to focus on policy rate or repo rate whether it is increased or not that is what you need to focus so let me conclude by saying this if repo increased it is not good not good or i'll just write bad repo increased bad you need to take bearish trade repo decreased it is a very good situation that the price is stable you're looking for more growth okay so you need to take a bullish trade if unchanged then what you need to do go with existing trend but guys you will see certain situations they will keep repo unchanged but they do something with crr okay repo unchanged then you need to see what uh, have been done with crr and slr that will decide the move again if crr is increasing again it is not good it is bad because it will affect the bank so this is bearish okay crr decreasing it is good for banks and this is bullish same is the case with slr i'll just write it here slr increase it is bad so you need to go bearish slr decrease 
எஸ் எல்ஆர் மீன்ஸ் டச்சுவேட்ரி லிக்விடிட்டி ரேஷியோ சிஆர்ஆர் மீன்ஸ் கேஷ் ரிசர்வ் ரேஷியோ இன் எஸ் எல்ஆர் யூ நீட் டு மெயின்டைன் சம் அமௌண்ட் சர்டன் பர்சன்டேஜ் இன் கவர்மெண்ட் போன்ஸ் தட் யூ கே நாட் லென்ட் இன் சிஆர்ஆர் யூ நீட் டு மெயின்டைன் சர்டன் அமௌண்ட் இன் த ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் கேஷ் விச் யூ கே நாட் லென்ட் இட்ஸ் அ டெட் மணி பேங்க்ஸ் கே நாட் மேக் எனி ரிட்டர்ன் வித் வித் சிஆர்ஆர் பட் எஸ்எல்ஆர் யூ வில் கெட் ரிட்டர்ன் ஆஸ் பர் கவர்மெண்ட் போன்ஸ் ஸோ எஸ்எல்ஆர் இட் டிக்ரீஸ் இட் இஸ் குட் இட் இஸ் புலிஷ் so this one single page will summarize everything for you just take a screenshot of this or just note down this and this is how you plan for rbi trades no indicators no support resistance will work if repo increased you just need to take bearish trade nothing indicators will work if you if repo decreases you just need to take bullish trade immediately okay so that's a case with the, all this at this point of time when you uh, when you get the situations like budget and uh, this rbi policy don't look much for indicators look for what is the impact okay so that's it guys about rbi policy